shout out to the sponsors Bybit. Guys, I'm still trying to give away a Rolex. Okay, we need 200 signups on my Bybit link. The info and the Google form, the info is in my Telegram. So if you want a chance to win a Rolex for free, all you gotta do is sign up and fucking take some trades on Bybit. Info's in my Telegram. Shout out to them. The link's in the description. And uh, yeah, I hope, uh, I hope everyone's making some money. Hope everyone's having a good time. Appreciate y'all. Love y'all. Two weeks ago, when I did my last stream, we were trading up here. And what did I say? I said that there are two scenarios that I see. And I said, scenario one is that the higher low is basically being put in here. So right here, right? And scenario two was we take out this low and then we go up. So I said, either way, I believe we end up trading higher. It's a question of, is the low in here? Or are we gonna take out this wick? which ended up being the case. So we got the deviation. We've got the quick reclaim. Now question is, you know, what's going to happen from here? We've got the, you know, H12 SFP here. So to me, this is potentially enough reason to, you know, maybe get the pullback that I want. But again, you have to have a plan for if price isn't going to give you your desired pullback. A lot of people, when you're trading an uptrend, they'll be waiting for this really deep pullback. They'll say, okay, here's the order block. Here's the SR level here. Here's the, the moving average. This is where I want to enter. And then price will do this and then it'll just go up more. And then they go, well, what the fuck? Now I'm sidelined, right? If price is going to go up aggressively, you have to have multiple scenarios laid out, multiple plans prepared for how you are going to get involved. Because just because you didn't get your ideal entry, but it's gonna go higher, you still have to have a way to get involved. So looking at this, right? I wanna see us pull back to here, let's say, and then go up. What happens if it doesn't? What happens if I'm waiting for it to pull back to here and it doesn't? Am I just gonna let it trade to here and not take any trades? Not Get involved? No. I'm going to try and find another setup. Maybe it means I need to go into a lower time frame. Maybe it means I need to be looking at another POI, another area of interest. Because if we start consolidating above here, maybe we get an H12 close above this high. Well, guess what? Then this becomes a breaker. And now I'm looking to bid a much shallower retest. So my desired entry is down here. But if we don't get that and price remains bullish and it doesn't give me any clues that, you know, it's going to go lower, then I might have to make a new plan, readjust so I can get involved and add more size that I want to get on. So I'm happy with these entries down here, but I want to add more. I want to add more size. So I'm going to take a stab down here if we get it. I'd like to see this H12 SFP play out. We have Monday's low here. So maybe we get a move below there. It doesn't have to come this deep. It could be shallow, right? It could be just into like here. There's Monday's low right there. It could be as shallow as that. That's what I posted on Telegram today, right? Move down here, then uh, move up from here. Something like that. Or it could be deep. I'm of the mindset that we're going higher. I think we are eventually going to take out these highs. So I'm willing to take another attempt at a long closer to kind of 61K here and at least target up until, you know, this supply. Like we're definitely going to take out these highs, I think. This will be a tricky area, right? We could reject from here. I don't know. But a move from here to you know, here. And then if I get another ad from here to here, right, that's plenty of upside. I don't need to just assume we're going to new all time high from there. I'm fine scaling some out, blah, blah, blah. Now that's what I'm hoping for. Let's see how it works out. I'm only positioned from here. Can we come down here? Sure. But based on how we traded below this wick and how strong this move up was, I'm willing to take another long attempt here, like to try and add size on long in validation here before assuming that we're just going to fully retrace and trade all the way down to here. I think it's much more likely likely if we're going to trade down into here or below this low, it happens after another leg up. That makes more sense to me. But again, anything can happen. And I talk about this all the time in previous videos. It's all fine and dandy. And it's really fun to go, hey, price is going to do this. Then it's going to do this. And then it's going to do this. And then it's going to do this. Because if all of those things happen, you look really smart. You can post that online and you can fucking farm the clout well until it runs dry. But this isn't a trade, okay? Like, are you shorting this to here? Are you longing this to here and then shorting this to here and then longing this again to here, right? Like there's multiple trade ideas in here and you don't really know what's gonna happen until it fucking happens, right? It's hard to predict where this low is gonna form and then are you actually gonna be able to get in down there and blah, blah, blah. So rather than try and determine these three price legs in a row, I'm much more interested in saying what's the most likely next single move? And can I 
profit from that. That's how you make money. You don't make money going, oh, Bitcoin's going to do this, 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 and then it's going to go to all time high. Because, well, what happens if you buy here? Are you going to hold it for all of this shit and then this and then eventually to here? Maybe. Probably not though, right? If you say Bitcoin's going to do this and then this and then this and this and this and then all time high and then you buy here, if it does this, you're probably going to puke here. A lot of people will. Much better off saying, okay, if I think Bitcoin is going to go to here. How can I get in a trade from here to here? Now it's here. Let's look at what things are doing. How is price reacting at that level? Okay. I think it's going to go down now. Can I get short from here to here? Okay. Now I think it's going to go back up again. Can I get in a long here for here? So it ends up doing those, you know, various moves, but you need to frame it as trade ideas, right? How are you actually going to get into the trade? How are you actually going to get in the trade and profit from this prediction? I'm in the business of trading. What's the next most likely direction and trade idea I can get in. And I would like to believe that it's a long trade. So that's what I'm looking to do. Some sort of long trade for a move towards 70K is what I'm looking for the next single trade. What happens after that, I'll deal with that when we get there. I posted on Twitter and I posted on Discord as well and Telegram. So I said, hey, we have an H12 SFP here. We're getting a little bit of a pullback, but then we put in a bullish H12 SFP at this low. So for my system, there's enough there for me to warrant trying to take a long. So I went down to the hourly. We had the sweep. We had the market structure break. So I took the long. It fucking went down for two straight hours. I said, fuck this shit. I closed and it still might go down, but I ended up closing at the stone bottom. So I literally said close at 519 PM. That's this fucking candle. I said, I'm closing it right here in, in the wick. I closed my long. It's just hilarious that I took like, I think on, I think this was like a $4,000 loss because I was long 10,000 75 X. So this was like a four grand loss at the Pico wick and then it immediately went up and I would have at least been able to close it break even, but whatever. So I took the trade because we had the H12 SFP. We had the market structure shift. It's a valid long. I'm out and yeah, maybe we come back to the entry here. I'm not going to attempt it again. I'm going to wait and see, but the setup was there and it's valid. So if you took it, when I posted it, it's still valid. You got a new order block that just formed right here, right? This could absolutely still play out, but I'm salty because I closed at the fucking stone bottom. But uh, yeah, H12 sweep, market structure break. Now, if this setup fails, we have Monday's high and low here. If this setup fails, that deeper pullback scenario, remember I said it's near Monday's low, that's something I'd potentially be interested in. So maybe this setup fails, we trade down here and I'd be willing to try another long down here or even closer to here. But again, we're playing a dangerous game because wherever this pullback ends, right, could be the low before next, you know, another five to $7,000 move to the upside. We're already up $7,000 from our entry. This could be the next, the beginning of a mega leg. And if you look back here where we traded below the range low and then V reversed, if you look here, this was a very shallow pullback. So here's the range low. It's eerily similar, right? There's the range low traded below, spent not a lot of time there. This is like two days V reversed. I know I personally remember this setup. I was trying to long the breaker here and it tagged the breaker but it never gave you that deep pullback, right? So I know me specifically, and I know other people as well. We're probably waiting for a retest of this, right? Maybe a retest of this fair value gap, and it never came. It just tagged the breaker, and then it just traded up. And if you go to today's price action, spent even less time below the lows, but again, couple of days down here and it's already trading up there, right? Like there's a chance it does not come back down here. So you gotta be prepared for that. So when I talked about that at the start of the stream, you gotta have multiple scenarios. You gotta be not afraid to get in on continuation if it's not gonna give you the pullback you want. But to me, I'm pretty confident whether it's from here or from another dip down, we are gonna go tag this kind of 70K level again. So I wanna get in on that leg. I wanna get a leverage trade in for this next leg and I need to try and figure out where that's gonna happen. So that's that's what I'm watching for here. Maybe this is the setup and I fumbled it, or maybe we get, you know, a Tuesday morning sell off below Monday's low. And then I get a nice little, you know, long trigger here into Monday's high and into 70. I don't know, but I'm pretty confident this is a market maker buy model. Draw your little boxes here if you want. And I think we're gonna we're gonna expand up to 70K. Just a matter of how I get in. That's all I care about. I used to get tons of likes and I'd draw out these market maker models on Bitcoin and they would work, right? People, oh my God, you did it. But unless I took a trade from here to here and here to here and here to here and here to here, who cares if I called it? It's cool and all to call it, right? But what's way cooler than calling 
calling it is making fucking money. Always remember that. Okay, Ethereum, we could see like one more rollover again on Ethereum, same as Bitcoin. This was a beautiful short here, right? Right, like that was fucking beautiful. H12, H1, there's your breaker right there. That's as crispy as it gets on the short side. Literally like no heat. Even with your stop up there, you fucking smashed it. So that was a beauty. But Ethereum, I think, you know, looks a little stronger than Bitcoin. You know, it's just wicking, wicking, wicking below this low. Whereas Bitcoin had a much deeper sell off here. You know, and Ethereum BTC is still just fucking hanging around this fucking low, you know, and it's not selling off. It's sweeping down here, right below these lows. So we'll have to see. But I think Ethereum USD to me, it looks a little stronger. Now, I would love to long down here. Monthly chart, we have a monthly order block here. I know it's a huge box, big old fucking box main. Well, you know who else got big box? Your fucking mother. But monthly order block here, like I would love to get into a long, right? We've got some wicks down here on the weekly. So if we get another sell off, I would love to long, you know, as close to 2,500 as possible, right into this area here. I would love that. But I don't know if that's going to happen. We would need BTC to sell off again for that to play out. So maybe, you know, we get a move up on Ethereum, similar to Bitcoin going to 70. Ethereum puts in a lower high. We get the one more big washout. This would be the dream scenario. But again, predicting this, 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 that doesn't make me any fucking money. I, I'm. It's good to think that this could happen. Now I can prepare myself. I can have a plan. So if price comes down there, I can fucking execute. But for now, what is the next most likely trade idea? So we've got that weekly sweep happening and we've got this right here. There's your breaker. So a little bit lower on Ethereum. So this would line up with Bitcoin trading down into here. So if Bitcoin's gonna trade down to 61, Ethereum, I think you can get in sub 3K again towards 2960, 2970. That's the trade idea. And then I would trade that up into here, right? So if Bitcoin's gonna get one more little bit of a pullback and then you know we have a decision point up around 3,500, that's what I'd be looking for on Ethereum, depending on what Bitcoin does. If Bitcoin's just gonna go up from here, then I don't have a setup on Ethereum. I mean, I'm long spot, but I don't have a leverage trade here. Sure, you could punt it here, but your stop's there, target's there. It's okay, risk reward. It's not the best, right? Like if you're just gonna punt it, one and a half. So I'd much rather get in down here, a little bit further down, a little bit more of a pullback, confluent with Bitcoin pulling back to 61. That's what I'd kind of be looking at on Ethereum if it's going to come. If it's just going to go up from here, I'm not in a trade on Ethereum, right? I'm not going to get in a trade. Now on both Ethereum and Bitcoin, we have, right? weekly supply here and Bitcoin weekly supply up here as well. So that is an area where I would be if I'm in longs, right? You're looking to TP some. And if there's bearish price action, you're you're taking the short. If we get bearish PA in weekly supply, I will take a short, even if it's just for a hedge. So DXY, interesting spot here. We've been in this range for two years, ran the range low, trade to the range high, ran the range low, trade to the range high. And then for now, we're rejecting from here. So it is coming into this bullish order block and we could potentially be getting a bounce here. So if we're bullish on crypto, we need this to sell back off into the range, sell off deeper back off into the range. Because if this thing breaks out of this two year long range and breaks to the upside and has a leg up, crypto is going to go down. It's going to go down because this will mean the stock market fucking nukes. That's something to watch here as well. We've got this fair value gap up here that's not been filled. So that's something to watch on DXY and to watch on equities as well, right? So this is at some resistance, but potentially into some support here. And then this is coming into some potential resistance here, right? So if the DXY is at support and the SPX is at resistance, right? And if the support holds on DXY, the resistance will likely hold on SPX and crypto. So that's something we're going to watch, right? If we drift a little higher, you know, a little lower here, crypto drifts up to, you know, 69.70. And then the dollar has a big push up while we're into this supply. That would be a bearish potential scenario to watch. Hello, sorry for bothering you. I want to offer promotion to your channel viewers, followers, views, chat bots, etc. The price is lower than any competitor and the quality is guaranteed to be the best. Guaranteed? How can you guarantee such good quality? for such low prices. Flexible and convenient order management panel, chat panel, everything is in your hands. A huge number of custom settings go to sh The username is apparent bracelet nine, because apparently there was eight other bracelets. You did not have to redeem that. That's fucking funny, but uh, what's up? Coconut, coconut. Um, I don't know why I'm doing that. That is how he fucking wins this thing. Coke or not. No, coconut. Yes, that's exactly what I said. Uh, excuse me. 
It's a coconut burp. No pain. Does that all make sense? I care because I am a clout goblin, the clout lord, king of the clout, the clout well drainer, the coconut milk drinker. Coconut. The label, it's in Chinese. That's how you know it's good. If I would have just bought whiff instead of whatever the fuck I bought, I'd have so much more money than I do. My coins go up, your coins go down. Perhaps I'm just a massive fucking mid twit, mid curve. And the fact that the dog has the hat is why it's so fucking great. Coconut. I bought Popcat when it was fucking pennies and I sold it when it was still pennies. G, 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 G on your fucking head. Nuke it, nuke it, nuke it. Fuck you, you fat fucks. There's your fucking TA on Popcat. God damn it. G tote Chad's in on Tia. Oh my God. I hate this coin. Fucking piece of shit. I was in profit for what? Three hours? Fucking piece of shit. Fuck this coin. I hate this coin so much. Coconut. No. Um, I don't do any neck specific exercises, guys. This is just natural. I hope you don't lose it all, brother. Coconut. I mean, have you heard of loaf coin? It's coin pegged to the price of a loaf of bread. How does it remain pegged to the price of bread? Like what happens if people sell it, right? Does that mean that they're just gonna buy? They have infinite money to buy and make sure it's pegged to the price of bread. And what kind of bread? Wonder bread, Petrich farm bread, white bread, multigrain, is it sourdough? Bread in Canada, bread in the States, bread over in Europe where they're eating fucking baguettes. On Tuesday, drinking wine, smoking a cigarette. Who's the arbiter of the bread? These are the questions I need to answer before I put any money into an instrument such as loaf coin. It's always a little bit, but you definitely get numb to it. Yeah, gluten-free bread? What kind of bread are we talking about? Is backed by bread. Who's holding the bread? How much bread? Where is the bread located? Is it in a warehouse? Is it secure? Who has access to the bread? So many questions. It's literally Fort Knox of bread secured by the blockchain. Well, that's impressive. They use baskets of various breads vacuum sealed in a vault under Svalbard. I can't even pronounce that, so it must be secure. Coconut bread, now we're fucking talking. So does everything I just yelled about for fucking 20 minutes make sense so far? I can look at all your fucking shitty coins with low market caps and get a Zach XPT thread written about me in the process. And yeah, appreciate you guys. I'll talk to y'all soon. Lots of love, coconut.